Shalom, welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabados of Delmar, together with my co-host Mark Kronich of Statewide News Service and jbiztechfeli.com. Well, Rabbi, we have a very special guest with us today, and thank you for the introduction. We have Judy Doshate, who's a common council member, and she represents uh, areas of uh, Albany on the Ninth Ward, which is uh, Helderberg and uh, the New Scotland Woodlawn neighborhoods. neighborhoods. And it's great to have you on the show. You're a freshman legislator, you know, yeah. it's great. Well, thank you for inviting you know, you me. You succeeded Jim Sano, who's been on the, uh, on the show here a couple of times. And, you know, have, uh, are people still calling Jim or have you taken over the mantle? And <laughs> well, he hasn't told me that people are still calling him. Okay. <laughs> and I certainly get enough calls. <laughs> okay, you do. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. you do a great newsletter and people... You know, you send out the information of what people need to know. So I'm, and I personally get it. So I'm happy that you know you're doing that. So thank you. It's not easy. <laughs> it takes time. Well, it, do, it does take time, but I think that it's important to do what I can to inform people of what's going on, and then it also gives people an opportunity to provide input to mm -hmm. me. I get a lot of correspondence by email. You're right. oh. But you know, Judy, that um, really you, we can call you an honorary Jewish uh, common council person because you take in really, I don't know if there is a Jewish ghetto in Albany, but um, there is the Jewish areas, New Scotland and Whitehall, and you really take, uh, take it all in then. So maybe we can give you the honorary title over here, the oh. Jewish common council person. Well, I wouldn't mind that at all. Let mm -hmm. me just see if I can get this. Put it through the uh, ring. Up through the top. Up through the top. And not that the Jewish people have any special needs to choose to you tell. You got it. Thank you. Okay. You're, yeah. you're now an official engineer. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Jewish people don't have any special needs, I would think, in the just, you know, like, like everybody else's needs. They have low crime and be safe and a good city. So they're really, their needs are just like everybody else's who's a good citizen's needs. Correct. I am aware of the fact that there's a number of temples uh, very close uh, to my uh, ward and also uh, two that are in my ward uh, as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I attended the um, installation of the new rabbi at the uh, Temple Israel and oh, really? enjoyed that. Yep. And I uh, know quite a few of the members there as yes, you well. Yes, you seemed very comfortable. I was there with you. I was there at the same time. and. Uh, in fact, I wrote about it on my blog, uh, jbiztechvalley.com, and I um, have a picture of you on the website also. So there you go. Well, I'm it's, glad you're it's being my connected. neighborhood. I'm and glad I... you're being connected and you're just not uh, a, a part-time legislator. You really look like you're a full-time legislator. Oh, yeah, a little bit more so than I thought I would be. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's, it, it does keep me not, busy. It's not a full-time job officially, quote unquote. I'm sure you put in so many hours, but right. It, no, it's there's. Uh, it's not officially a full-time job. Um, most of the council members do have um, employment outside of the council. I am retired from the New York State Department of Health. I've worked there in council's office, and uh, I'm glad to bring what I've learned there to this position here. And you're happy to be out of the New York State Department of Health, I'm sure. <laughs> I loved my job there. I really did. Um, you're the one. <laughs> <laughs> that made the decision the, to... No, no, you're the one that enjoyed your job. Right. You, I don't know of anyone else who enjoys the job oh. of working for the Department of Health. <laughs> I uh, learned so much uh, and so many challenging issues, and yes. I guess I like challenges and I like learning. Uh, I'm definitely the, a lifelong learner. Are you on the health committee on the Common Council? Or? I am not. Hmm. Um, I'm on the law committee, yes. uh, law buildings and codes committee. I'm on the finance uh, committee and then also housing and community development. And I've been enjoying what I'm learning there. Well, this is very appropriate. My next question is appropriate for the housing and for the development and all that is the land bank, which is a county issue, but right. I still, you know, but it's designed to. Uh, facilitate tearing down older homes that are not historic, I guess, in nature, and then the uh, and then rebuilding something that's relatively more modern and fits with today's society. Well, I wouldn't say that it's charged with tearing down buildings. That's not that's not the priority. The priority is to take sure. vacant buildings. Yes in whatever state they are and have the community make a decision about the future of that particular building 
in some cases, um, we would hope that some of the buildings would be brought back because some of the vacant buildings in our city really are gorgeous buildings and worthy of being restored. It's just a matter of the finances often, and that's where the land bank uh, can help and, and Think provide of loans. Some I'm not familiar, so I'm just, Mark's the reporter always, and I'm the regular citizen, even though I'm a rabbi, but I don't know what it is. Maybe our viewers don't don't know either. So if you can define what they're going to do for the well, it's a buildings. little unclear because it's brand new. Right. There's a land bank corporation. Uh, the legislation was passed, I think, about a year ago, and and we did opt to uh, incorporate one. Uh, and it's just getting off the ground. Um, actually, right now they're advertising for an executive director. That's how new. Uh, it so where is. do I put my application? <laughs> well, definitely go to the county, Albany County website if anybody okay. uh, is interested in that p particular position. Uh, they are, uh, there is a call for applications for that and also for an advisory board, uh -huh. which would be community members. So the, the funding, right now I believe that there's $2 million, there's at least $1 million from the county and I believe the city and the state also have another about $1 million that has been a committed that would be used to purchase some of these buildings um, mm -hmm. uh, and also help um, other people renovate them, um, potentially in some cases actually uh, pay for the demolition uh, costs for some of them. And some of these buildings could be in your the Ninth Ward. They're not all down in the lower wards. Right? That's correct. And that's part of the decision making that that board is um, charged mm -hmm. with. You know, I always, you know, I, I know New York City is not Albany, Albany is not New York City, but on the other hand, I mean, maybe there is a connection because New York City and, you know, you're familiar with, and I was because I go to the New York for many times for Lubavitch headquarters, but you take these literally slums, let's uh, be uh, clear about it, Harlem, Bedford, Stein, you read that everybody wants to go, you know, this is people with money in the land. So I'm thinking, I mean, I mean, it's not like an impossible dream. That's what I'm saying. If New York City could do it, I'm looking at Albany and saying, hey, look, it's a beautiful city. You know, all right, there's rundown buildings which are an eyesore. On the other hand, you know, for the right people, hey, li living across from a park, you know, I mean, this is, these are beautiful, like you say, beautiful buildings, the structures of building, all right, maybe they need a little gutting out, you know, and the fresh paint, a coat of paint. But, you know, it's not such a wild dream as I'm saying. You know, if I'd say, oh, you can take the, these uh, low-income uh, houses and you can make them fabulous. You, say, you know, 10 years ago, I may say, Rabbi, you're, you're, you're dreaming. But New York City's doing it in the worst areas. And um, that's what I'm saying. I think the dream and the hope, maybe that's what the land bank is trying to do, is to re regentrify, you know, these these old buildings, because it's the thing that's done. I know Chicago is doing it, the worst neighborhoods in Chicago, people are telling me, New York City, so maybe Albany could be the new, uh, the cities are in, that's what it is. Well, absolutely, there's been uh, a resurgence of interest in um, living in the cities, and um, Albany actually has a lot of developments going on, large um, buildings that are being turned into condominiums and apartments. Um, and that's very exciting. And I think to go along with that, having some of these individual properties be able to be developed by individuals. And really, when you look at the price of a building in the city of Albany, compared to so many of these other cities, and what we also have to offer in the way of theater and concerts and museums and the riverfront and recreation and being just two and a half hours to New York City, we have a lot to offer for um, relatively little mm -hmm. uh, for people who want to uh, invest in our city. And I, th I think the, the main question is whether or not people um, continue to do what they did, which is move to the suburbs, um, or whether people are going to be um, being more focused on living in the city. And I think having a walkable, our goal of having a walkable city um, um, makes it very desirable uh, for people to live here. That's something that a lot of people have a lot of interest in. One of the things I, I want to pick up on what the rabbi said was, you know, like in Brownsville, they regentrified so much that the condos are going for a million dollars. And I'm just stunned because I grew up in Brooklyn and I'm just, the, the, that was a neighborhood I was told never to go to. 
<laughs> Stay away My from... My son lives in Prospect Heights, and uh -huh. he and his girlfriend would love to buy a condominium. But they can't afford it. <laughs> right, right. It's, uh, I think, it's, Rabbi, you have a son that lives near Yeah, there. Uh, you know, there's a good part. I mean, I'm sure some people made a lot of money buying, you know, in the boom. On the other hand, you feel for the young people that, you know, you want to buy a house. That's the American dream, to buy a, a house and live there, and, and here it is a million dollars just to... That's why I tell you it's interesting because that's why a little bit I push people and, you know, I wanted to deal with the Jewish people, of course. I said, you know, you're crowded down there. You know, Albany, the area is very good and you're going to get a real deal, you know, by buying a house up here compared to New York City or not even a deal. You can't afford it there and here you can. I don't know. That's why I guess I'm always pushing that we got something good around here. You see, close to New York City, I'm not talking about go to Wyoming, you know, in the middle of nowhere. I'm talking about a few hours from New York. So you got your cake and eat it too. You got New York. You got a nice city. You got a nice price for a house, some affordable house. I don't know. That's why I think that there really could be an opportunity there to really build us up. I do want to put in a plug for my particular ward, which is a great ward. To live in, in terms of the walkability, and it's like living on it. You know, a lot Just of our maybe define where, like New Scotland. Define it's what that basically is in it's general. from Albany Med along New Scotland Avenue from Albany Med to St. Peter's Hospital, mm -hmm. right? And essentially along New Scotland, going over to Hackett, and then it also goes in the other direction over to Woodlawn and as far parts of it as far as Madison Avenue. So there's just lovely blocks, mm -hmm. um, houses that are selling right now for $150,000, three bedroom, two bath houses um, with well, lovely yards and it's walking distance to CVS, a dozen restaurants. I don't want to put a damper on your enthusiasm for your neighborhood, okay? But I got to tell you, these houses were built for a different era than we're living in today. You have these nice large houses with a one-car garage. Mm -hmm. You don't have, I mean, nowadays people, women Most like, of the houses I'm talking about is a detached garage if you a have a garage. Detached at all. Right. You have a detached garage, which means you have to go outside through the rain or the snow and, you know, it's not convenient and, you know, and plus, you know, walk-in closets are a rarity. I mean, there's so many things uh, in terms of the heating structure and all that, that, you know, it's just not today's way of living. Right. They're in if they're oil they're, so some of them still have oil tanks and it's just not uh, e uh, ecologically friendly. You know, I I just look I know people who live there and I look at these homes and I'm just like shaking my head and the, and the rooms are postage stamp size where people today like larger bedrooms and larger rooms and I don't know. I I've been looking around. I live on Hackett and I've been looking around for another home. And I'm, I'm enjoying my house a lot more now that I see what else is out there. Right, <laughs> I right. Mean, but, you know, it's a, I, I think some of these homes need to be torn down and be, rebuilt mm -hmm. as a, a, in terms of larger and more modern uh, settings and structures than what they are today. And you can but love the, you can love the talking, homes. A lot but, of people are talking about downsizing, though, and going in the other direction. And that's when yeah. people you go to condos like, the ones in, on Whitehall Road there, uh, you know, Whitehall, New Scotland, on that corner. Uh, but, you know, it's still, when you want to build agree. a family... The, con the you know, condos are a great option for a lot of people who, who are moving to downsize. Downsize, but if you want to have a family and you grow a family and you're young, you know, this is going to be a temporary, it's going to be a transient uh, ward because people are not going to want to stay there much long, you know, more than seven years, eight years, whatever, until they realize that they're outgrowing their house. That's how I view the neighborhood. Well, I've been so. where I live for 26 years now, and I granted I have a, a, a larger yes. home, <laughs> but I also have a lot of neighbors who have been there from even before I was there and raised their families there and are very happy yes, with it. Yes, there uh, there's a home for everyone. That's everyone right. has different styles and well, different and tastes, and it. I'm, you know, what my tastes are and what I'm looking for just isn't around the uh, the upper wards that uh -huh. I can find right now. So I'm just How saying. How about the governor's mansion for you, Mark? Well, <laughs> 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 if just, you want to live in all in there, I, I, I want some of that. You grew up in or raised in Ossining, I presume, not the prison, but yeah. right. Yeah, okay. That's, they that's let you correct. out, okay. Yeah. And then you went to outside Rochester, Pittsburgh. 
Right. I spent my junior part of my junior year in Pittsburgh, and then I moved to New York City. Is that for, because your parents moved? They got a. My a, father moved up there. Um, I, my family was split up, and and uh, I was my father um, had custody of me and my younger brother, and my two older sibling, my three older siblings lived with my mother in New York City, where she went to live. So and then eventually I went to live with her before oh. going to college. Wow. Okay, so do you still, you have uh, five, four siblings, five children in the family all together? Correct. You Correct. S you're all in touch, you're all... We do. Yeah, we good. do stay in touch. Uh, That's important. Yeah. You know. Um, and you went to new SUNY New Paltz. Correct. Graduated cum laude in 76. Right. Oh, mm -hmm. he's done his research. Well, <laughs> it's a, you have a bachelor's in psychology and political mm -hmm. science, so that's right. good being in the legislature because you can have, use your psychology right. in the... <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you, as a lawyer, I often found the psychology, psychology. degree came in more handy. That's right. <laughs> and then you were up here since 1977. You worked for the State Assembly and the Higher Education Services Corporation before attending law school. Correct. Wow. That, Correct. That's I needed to take off some time to save some money to be able to afford to go to law school. And then you went to Albany Law and graduated cum laude in 83. Right. right. And your husband is city court judge Thomas Keefe. Right. And you've been married since 81. So you got married while you were in law school, I presume. That's correct. See, I could do that now. Yeah, <laughs> okay. right. Figure that out. And you have two adult sons? That's correct. They are just they, turned 26 and 28. Are they out of the house? Yeah, one lives in Brooklyn and the other one in Big Sky, Man uh, Big Sky Montana. So you're yeah. now an empty nester. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> but now but you're, staying plenty busy. So you have... Uh, one room in the house that's just for the legislative work, and another room that Tom Keith does his lawyer, his uh, court judgeships uh, work, background work it, for his it, judgeship. It, it's it's not quite. It <laughs> probably should be assigned like that a little bit more. But the, you know, the kitchen table well, works so for, quite well for a lot of our stuff. You know. So, what is it that you like about the led Common Council that led you to want to run for this seat? I mean, well, what? It's, what you know, it's a lot of meetings. It's not a whole lot of money. You don't need you don't need the uh, health benefits. You probably have that through your husband. So actually, through my retirement. Through retirement. Right. So why take this on? Why do this? Um, because I felt like it was the perfect job uh, for me. Um, I've been um, an advocate of sorts um, since I started at New Paltz in in '72 and I've advocated for different issues. I just take an interest, um, and I'm not somebody, I, I see a problem and I want, mm -hmm. I'm compulsive about wanting to solve problems uh, and being active and involved in my community. Uh, so I was involved in Little League, I was involved in the PTA, I started a babysitting co-op in the Helderberg uh, neighborhood when shortly after I moved there. A great group of friends um, that I've been very blessed to know, and my kids kind of grew up with their kids. Um, and so I've just been involved. And so I like people, I like being involved, and then of course my legal skills uh, and my 25 years of working for the Department of Health and experience in problem solving on some um, fairly difficult um, issues. I like to listen to and understand what the problem is and then be collaborative. What are the problems, problems now in the city? You know, so now you're present the day, you're obviously on city council. What are the problems that you see or that there are that well, you was, have to deal with? I was going to ask yeah. something similar in that. Yeah. Do you think that this is a, uh, is, there, is it everything that you thought it would be now that you've been in there several months? Is yes the, and more. <laughs> and more, okay. Because and, and I didn't anticipate oil trains and casinos. And smoking um, in no smoking in public parks. Oh, well, of course I anticipate things like that will oh. uh, come up as, as you know, societal <laughs> issues and, you know, societal norms and what do we uh, think is a good rule to have or not have um, in our community and listening to different people's opinions about that. Are you a and, smoker? I used to smoke, yeah. right? and and there and um, that ordinance passed fourteen to zero. Right, um, Michael, Michael O'Brien abstained, abstained yeah. and I think that one of the reasons why it passed is because there are so many reform smokers <laughs> on the Common Council. How long has it been since you puffed? Uh, since before law school. Oh, when okay. I quit smoking, I decided if I can quit smoking, I can make it through law school. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> this is hard. Uh, it, it was that hard, and it, and it did take me three times. I remember. 
Governor Cuomo said that he cut, he stopped cold turkey and never went back. Uh, Mario Cuomo. Mario, yeah. right. Yes, he just yes. stopped one day, just put the cigarettes down and he never picked it up again. Right. That's the toughest thing to do. Like you said, three times. You, right, you right. Know. Yeah. I mean, qu quitting is so easy because you keep doing but that, it. But, but you can't, you can't right. stop harshly. I mean, I know some people who do with the help of some of the patches or whatever. At the time, there was not, none of that. So each time I did do it sort of yeah. cold turkey, and uh, eventually I was committed mm. enough just to make sure I never picked up another cigarette. I couldn't touch another cigarette. So let's talk briefly about the oil tankers. Uh, what's, you know, they got these air samples. Uh, they want to take air samples. They want to take, I mean, it's just not the city of Albany. It's not just the lower wards down by the river. It's Ward of Lee, Cohoes. It's more of a county issue. It's our issue. entire country. Really? Well, it starts in North Dakota, and then it goes... I mean, that's a long around. distance yeah. that we're exposing yeah, a lot of people to that kind of risk. So what's wrong with that? What's wrong we, with it? Be I mean, we, it's a we, risk. We expose people to risks by driving our cars. I mean, that's, everything has a risk to it. The, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, it's really not so an that, Albany issue either, is it? An, um, it's not a city. I don't think yeah, it's a city. city of Albany although the mayor of well, Albany Well, it, it is a big city issue because we have so many government buildings. I, I, I really see it and um, for myself, it's something I did not anticipate when I ran. Um, as all of a sudden I see myself as being a steward for our historic assets in the, in the city of Albany as well as um, of the river. And I, I guess I should have um, seen the latter. The former I kind of anticipated a certain amount. But the latter I hadn't really um, given much thought to as a common council member. But when you're transferring oil onto these barges and sending them down the river, um, you're relying on people to be on top of things and do things right. And the consequences of somebody doing something wrong are huge. And we've seen that environmental disasters. And I am concerned uh, about that aspect of it as well as the risk. Um, to um, people as existed in um, Canada. I've asked other guests on the program, why not just put a wall up since the tracks were there first, then some brainiac decided to put a federally funded uh, housing development that was approved by the city, you know, right next to the tracks. Just put a wall up that, when you we know... Were, if when we were having one-tenth the amount of um, okay. Cargo, but now, hazardous ca cargo. But now that going we have the increase in it, why don't we put a wall up like we have along the throughway, the sound barriers, something that looks nice, and then, you know, and have that being a protective wall so that if there is an incident on the riverside, that it won't it'll impact minimally or reduce the impact on the residential side. I mean, well, it doesn't seem. Well, those particular homes that are there. That housing is just one part of the concern. The the train tracks go all along the river from Cahos and also come from uh, the west mm -hmm. uh, further, and so actually are bordering on parts of the twelfth ward and the fourth ward, coming uh, you know from that direction. Mm -hmm. um, we need increased safety overall with regard uh, to these shipments. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the, the wall itself, yes, that's one possible, that's and it's one piece. Right, but it's, possible. A, but it's a quick, short, you know, it's a, it's a solution that could be done re relatively quickly and then deal with the longer term effects of the air quality and the asthma and all the other issues that you need for safer trains and other things. But in the meantime, you're actually quickly preventing an accident from impacting the residential side of the tracks by putting well, the wall for up. for those particular residences, there, yeah. like I say, there's a lot of other residences that are very close proximity to right. railroad tracks carrying those trains. Uh -huh. And um, down by Ward of Lita goes right by, I mean, Bob's Diner, I'm told, is spitting distance uh, to the, as we say in Brooklyn, to the uh, tracks and to the trains. I mean, you know, and then you got the Stewart's right there, and then Cohoes has... A lot of, but you know you can't legislate what goes on in Waterfleet and Cohoes. You've got to think of the city of Albany. So in the city of Albany, just put up a you know let the you know ask your friends in in the Senate, U.S. Senate, Chuck Schumer, 
and G Kirsten Gillibrand to get a few thousand dollars and you know just get the wall up and just for immediate I, protection. I personally think when, I mean, when you start looking at, at spending that kind of money, I think that you need a more comprehensive plan before you start dealing with it okay. piecemeal. And part of that is what is happening with regard to the air quality right. samples um, and, mm -hmm. and what kind of exposure do people really have in that vicinity. So you put up the wall, you spend the money putting up the wall, and then you decide that the people need to be moved out of there anyway. Okay, so um, you still got a safety wall there so that no matter what's there, even for, if the people get moved out, you so still have a safety far? wall. So for how far do no we have that it, safety? Mark. That's what she's saying. No, it's you got along the throughway for miles and miles, you got these sound barriers. So you can do it for miles and miles. It doesn't. And that's, you got to look at a whole plan, I think, what she's saying. Well, that's what right. she's saying. I right. don't disagree, but I'm just pointing out my thoughts, and this is the exchange but, that we're right. having. Right. So let me, I want, right. I'm sorry. We have a I, few more minutes. I just want to ask you about education, the, the Albany City Schools. You were one time the vice president of the school board. Was there a policy in place that school board members who are the elected officials on the school board, they were not allowed to speak to the media? Was there any sort of policy about that? No, there was there was not any formal policy. There was a certain amount of um, recognizing that the better person to um, make statements to the press would be uh, the president of the school board. Oh, the superintendent. And, right. Right. Um, and uh, cer certainly there was a, uh, um, a greater level of caution uh, and desire to speak with one voice. Uh, the the um, theory being essentially you are working together as a corporate board, essentially. not It's not a corporation, but the equivalent of a corporate board. And you're making decisions collectively. And once you make the decision, then you just, even if you were on the other side, you stand behind that decision and you don't um, sort of churn the waters, you know, continue mm -hmm. to churn the waters. Certainly, um, before a decision was made, um, you know, I think all of us did a great deal of listening. There was a huge public comment period uh, throughout the time I was on the board, and I respected the opinions that came forth, and people certainly talked to me, et cetera. Um, I'm not somebody who loves going out and, and talking to the press, no offense. No, but, but this <laughs> is why we're so glad to have you on the program. But I'm just saying right now, it's the president, you know, there's a, a school board member who's Jewish, Sue Adler, mm -hmm. and it's like she can't come on the program because there's this, like you were saying, this this voice that says the, we have to speak in one term, and either the president, Rose Brandon, or the Dr. V, who's the superintendent, are the only ones who could speak for the board. But we're elect, we're not electing Dr. V. We're electing these school board yeah. members. They should be able to have their opinions known, and and we and I find that incomprehensible because when it's a board member that's a private corporation okay we're, we're not electing them the and, you know we're like so you know, the people are electing these these school I, board members and they don't want to be responsive to I'm the people. not comfortable yeah. commenting on why Sue Adler may choose not, to come on your show or not, or not come on yes, your show I know, I, I, I know you, you don't know, want to take specifics that's but very, I'm just <laughs> that's very that's um, very speculative I okay. think um, I'm just bringing it up. <laughs> right. We only have one or two minutes. You know, just back to home and something that you can control. City Council is just like the infrastructure. I know there's recently been problems like uh, with the over uh, floods. I mean, it wasn't like, all right, a tornado you can't do anything about, but just a few inches of rain and some s streets were just totally right at rush hour, just not unpassable. I mean, Absolutely. Is there a de dealing Absolutely. with that at the city council level? Well, let's first be clear. It wasn't just a few inches of rain. It was... Um, Two and a half inches in a short amount of time. Well, I'm told three to four inches okay. in an hour, yeah. and um, that's unprecedented in right. the city of Albany is right. what I'm told. So that's significant. However, we also have had that, you know, we had the problem with Irene. Um, Hurricane and people, Irene. Hurricane yeah. Irene. And people had plenty of problems uh, with that. And over the years, uh, there have been um, problems with flooding without it being um, to this degree. And we've tried to do some, some fixes in different places where you have holding tanks or 
uh, where you siphon off some of, of the water and allow it to sit and yeah. um, you know go into the ground. Um, but obviously that has not been enough and some of the people in my ward have um, faced continuing devastating consequences of um, that recent rainfall. All right, you know, we're out of time. There's always issues, so we wish you the best of luck and success in your new jobs relatively to, to Albany Common Council. And, mm -hmm. you know, and we look forward to having you come back and tell us of good news about the city of Albany. All right. All the best All of right. success. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.